Hey everyone, in this video I want to show you how I took some measurements of the electric current that feeds into an Ivy Bridge processor. Not only are we going to look into voltage drop at various loads and wiring setups, but we're also going to calculate power consumption by getting the current throughput in amperes by connecting a multimeter in series. I got the idea from a recent video by Linus Tech Tips, in which the guys compare CPUs by Intel and AMD based on the heat that they emit. I must say I really liked that video, as they made some real good effort to do the measurements right, insulating the mainboard, carrying tests out as consistently as possible. Still, measuring heat accurately is quite hard. First main problem is that it's pretty hard to completely insulate the CPU and the test trick. Thus, heat may, may transfer from CPU to the mainboard and out into the environment. Or, if you actually manage to thermally insulate the whole rig, then you will have all the heat from the mainboard flowing into the CPU, so you will be effectively measuring the whole system heat output. As some people mentioned in the comments of that video, an easier way to get some idea of produced heat is to measure the electrical power input. In the end, the vast majority of electricity input in a computer ends up exhausted as thermal energy. So I decided to try and get the amperage that a CPU consumes. On the one hand, this is a lot easier to measure accurately than heat, by simply using an amperometer. On the other hand, we must note that the values we will get are still going to include not only heat from the CPU, but also of the voltage regulators and other devices on the mainboard, such as the cooling fan and probably other devices depending on the mainboard design. For this test I'm using an HP Elite 8300 CMT tower running Linux. I will be doing some stress tests for CPU and iGPU, former being done with the Linux version of Prime95, and the latter with the Linux version of uh, Furmark. All tests being done with two different processors. One is Core i5-3470 and the other one is um, Xeon E3-1245 V2 which is roughly equivalent to an Intel Core i7-3770. First up, I set off to disconnect the 12V CPU connector from the mainboard, in order to connect my multimeter in series. Of course, I prefer not to cut the wires of a working power supply, so instead I decided to extend them with some spare cables. The final setup is as follows. 12 volt wires from the power supply go to the amperometer and then another wire goes from the amperometer to the positive pins of the 4 pin connector on the mainboard. Then the negative pins on the mainboard are connected directly with the power supply. After connecting all cables, I check that the wires are connected properly as well as that they are not shorted to each other. And then we're good to go. Alright, seeing a post screen is always a pleasant sight. Initial readings range between 1 and 3 amperes, settling around 1 amper when in bias. First thing I want to do is crank up the CPU fan. To avoid throttling while stress testing, but also to see if the fan is powered by the uh, same 12 volt rail. Curiously enough, it takes nearly a minute to reach maximum rounds per minute. And as we can see, it pulls around 270 milliamps right out of the same 12 volt power supply. Booting into Linux and preparing for the stress tests, idle loads drop to around 300 amps, milliamps actually, 
Apparently, the operating system taking advantage of some um, power saving C state features of this, of this processor. Starting with a small handy tool called Stress. It's uh, quite a useful um, tool if you want to do some quick tests, quick uh, stress testing. First, we're starting with uh, fewer threads to see how the system holds. One thread brings the total consumption up to 2 amperes. Two threads push it somewhat past uh, 3 amperes. At this point, effective core speed is about um, 3750 MHz, probably in line with uh, Turbo Boost settings for this Xeon processor. Three threads push a bit past 4 amperes. Four threads go a bit over 5 amperes. After that, six threads um, just add another 200 milliamps, um, effectively running hyper threading on two of the cores that are already um, loaded. And when we do eight threads, we push it a bit uh, over six amps. Okay, so now that's um, by far not the highest we can get. First, we are gonna run Prime95, with, which manages to put uh, quite a lot more pressure on um, the CPU cores. And there you have it. Now pulling a steady 8 amps. On top of that, we'll run a firm mark on the IGP unit of the processor, which is um, yet another part that can be stressed. Oops. Okay, I could have thought of this. Look at these probe wires. They are hot to the touch, apparently too thin and adding too much resistance, effectively dropping the voltage. Definitely not good. Let's get some voltage reading here. I got this nice little voltmeter that should do the job, while my multimeter is displaying the amps. Here we go, running stress tool with 8 threads at around 5.6 amps. Ouch. Ok, so we are below 10 volts on a 12 volt rail. That's gotta be bad. Let's see how it's running for mark. 8.5 volts. That's nearly unthinkable, in my opinion, running 12 volts at actual 8.5 volts, real bad. So here is what I'm up to now, removing these thin probe wires from the electrical chain, we will see how removing one and then removing two of them will influence the voltage at the 4 pin connector. Ok, so having a thin wire on the chain seems to make quite a big difference. Starting from less than 9 watts, we get to full 12 volts at full load when using thicker wiring along the whole chain. In that final setup, the Xeon processor manages to pull around 7.85 amperes at 12 volts, amounting to around 94.2 watts. And the Core i5 pulled only around 5.5 amperes at 12.3 volts, which amounts to mere 67.65 volts, even though it's supposed to have the same thermal design power rating as the Xeon processor. <laughs> 